Tuesday, July 10th, 2018, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today I'm going to talk about the uh, difference between the Keynesian School of Economics or PhD Economics, uh, the economics uh, that guides uh, the powers that be, the central bankers, the politicians of today, and the Austrian School of Economics. Uh, some of you have asked me to uh, compare both, and uh, that's what I will do today. And I will tell you which one I follow. I think you have an idea uh, already which school of economics uh, I follow. Uh, but uh, before I, I go into further details, I will uh, look at what the markets are doing this morning. It's just before 8 a.m. London. So yesterday, gold and silver did uh, fairly well early on. Uh, we got up to around uh, 1266. But as usual, the U.S. comes in, um, London uh, goes away around, uh, what time is it, uh, around uh, 10, 11 a.m. New York time. And then the COMEX boys, the paper boys start chipping away at the gold and silver price. So we came back down to uh, just below 1260. This morning, uh, we're at 1257.35 unchanged from the late COMEX close. Always disappointing. I think if you, uh, in the last 16 years, for example, since gold has gone from 250 to where we're now, if you only bought at the open in New York and close, uh, sold at the close, you've been doing really badly. <laughs> so uh, it just goes to show who's in charge of the, uh, the precious metals market. Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, the bullion banks uh, in New York. It's also London. London is part of the problem as well. And the BIS, of course, because they deal for the uh, central banks and they're above the law as well. Uh, so silver uh, is 16.09. Uh, it's down about two cents. As I said yesterday, uh, they were going to, you know, keep that 16.20 level. Uh, they're going to defend that. And they did. I think we got just above there, around 1622, but uh, that was all she wrote. Uh, I guess you could try to make money trading uh, these markets uh, because, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, you know how they, uh, what they, what their modus operandi is, you could, but uh, I, I don't think, I, I don't bother with it. Uh, I think it just uh, helps them uh, uh, do their uh, dirty work, so I just stay in physical. And uh, fr though frustrating it is, uh, in the longer term it will pay off because all these markets are artificial. And I'll come to that later when I talk about the different school of economics. Uh, so the Dow yesterday had a, a great day as well, uh, but uh, as I showed uh, in the chart yesterday, we're not really going anywhere. Uh, since uh, the beginning of the year. So we're uh, this morning it's up another 55 points. We're just under a quarter of a percent at 24,830. Uh, S&P is up uh, three and a quarter points, uh, not doing as well. It's at 2787. The NASDAQ uh, future up 20, uh, just under a third of a percent, just below 7,300. Uh, Currency-wise, uh, the pound... Uh, has rebounded from the lows of yesterday. A lot of uncertainty sur surrounding uh, Brexit. Uh, Theresa May's uh, government, she's had a few resignations, uh, important members of that cabinet. I won't go into details about who resigned uh, because I don't want to put much importance in this. I, I basically think Brexit uh, and all the goings on about Brexit is just a huge distraction for the, the problems that plague the British economy. And what's that problem? The major problem is debt. And the fact that, uh, yeah, the, the banking system and the few people uh, that benefit from it have been propped up for the last 10 years while the public has suffered. Uh, Euro is 117.50, pretty much unchanged. And the dollar, uh, 110.04, up 20 pips against the yen. Uh, crude oil rebounding a little bit here. We're back above, uh, we're just uh, at $73, WTI crude. 
up half a percent. Uh, Brent is up two thirds of a percent at 78.56. Uh, bond market, uh, the 10 year yield is at 285. So it's down one basis point. So we're still comfortably below that 3% level. So cryptocurrencies have fallen back a little bit. Uh, so yeah, they're having a tough time, you know, starting a new leg of, uh, of a bull market. Uh, we just have to uh, be patient in my opinion, like we're patient with the precious metals. Uh, so Austrian school of economics or Keynesian school. Uh, well, I'll tell you right off the bat, uh, I'm a proponent uh, of the uh, Austrian school. Uh, at university, uh, I did uh, economics and international relations, a mix of both. But uh, I can tell you that uh, it's the Keynesian school that they teach, even though there are some differences within the Keynesian school, uh, the different economists. Uh, even Milton Friedman, I, I would argue, he's, uh, even though he's not considered a Keynesian, he's a statist, in my opinion. He, and he, he calls for free markets, but he doesn't call for the abolition of uh, central banks. So in my book, that's no good. So uh, what got me into the Austrian School of Economics? Well, uh, the internet got me into it. Um, I started looking into, I always thought, you know, because people used to say, uh, when you're younger, you don't realize how much tax you're going to pay when you start working. And then I started working in my early 20s and uh, didn't think too much about it. But then when I started doing well at work and earning more, I realized how much tax I was paying. And uh, everyone tells you, well, you know, you have to accept it, you know, government uh, is always there tax and you know tax death and taxes are the only certain things and i used to think why you know why <laughs> there's a bunch of why do a bunch of bureaucrats uh know better what to do with my money than i do uh, and people would say oh but we need to build roads and stuff but that's rubbish if you go back you know to the there's a photo on the internet and uh i think it's in the early 1900s in New York or somewhere in the U.S., people walking down the streets, cars, uh, cars around already, some cars around, not too many automobiles, and uh, it looks really nice. And they said, oh, look at all the roads, no income tax, right? So it's a complete uh, fallacy. And that got me into looking, you know, free market, laissez-faire, and I found the uh, sources uh, on the internet and that's how I got involved uh, and then I found uh, lourockwell.com which I recommend I'll put the link below in the description Lou Rockwell runs the Mises Institute uh, Mises.org which I also found and that was late 90s early 2000s and at the same time I started uh, also buying gold uh, uh, Basically, I would say the difference between the Austrian school and the Keynesian school or the mainstream econ 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 economic uh, thought is uh, Austrian school uh, is for freedom, uh, free market, small government, sound money. The uh, mainstream economist, PhD, Keynesian economist is for uh, big government interference by government uh, they don't trust the, the market you see and uh, that's the main difference and that that's what uh, got me interested in the austrian school uh, they uh, they're not into all the equations uh, they don't look at economy as a science uh, like the phd economists do uh, <laughs> they laugh at this uh, theory of the uh, what's it called, uh, I forgot, this curve between unemployment and inflation. Uh, I forgot now, there's a big debate about it. Uh, that's not what they do. They look at who, human action and what affects human interaction in the economy. While the Keynesians, uh, they, they think that uh, through fiscal policy and monetary policy, uh, 
uh, governments and politicians can better run the economy, while the Austrians, uh, their main, uh, can, how can I say, tenant is that mar uh, market prices and individual human action determines uh, where how resources should be allocated. Uh, for them, the best, uh, how can I say, uh, policy is to follow uh, prices. I know it's been screwed up now because the Keynesians have such a stranglehold on, on the economy that we don't have uh, the uh, signals anymore, the free market signals. It's still there to some extent, but it's been so perverted, especially by the central banks who, and I recommend also this uh, video. Uh, it's a speech by uh, Nomi Prince that she made at the uh, at a Mises Institute do uh, uh, in Texas. I think it was uh, on June 2nd, Dallas, Fort Worth. And uh, Nomi Prince talks about how the central banks have rigged the whole world. And, uh, and she, so I really recommend that uh, speech. She said everything I've been saying the last few years that it will end in tears, they can't get out of it. She talks about how she was in Mexico and talked to a ex-central banker from Mexico and he told her in private that uh, the Mexican central bank was actually uh, meeting some officials of that bank, met with Ber Ben Bernanke uh, in 2008 and they advised him about saving the private banks they said, uh, if you start this, you won't be able to get out. And, uh, and he told her, you know, that uh, it's not going to end well because there's no way out. And I've talked about that as well uh, through one of the books that I recommended yesterday, Fiat Money, Inflation in France. Once you start the, to bail uh, the system out and the banks and the, and the bad actors, there's no way out. Uh, and uh, yeah, I re recommend that. So let's have a look uh, at the Mises Institute website uh, because I think they are the leader in Austrian School of Economics. I was even, uh, <laughs> my wife and I went in 2002 for the uh, 20th anniversary conference. Uh, I think she enjoyed it, but probably not as much as me, but uh, we made it a, a bit of a, kind of a holiday in the summer. Uh, we flew from London to Atlanta, and at, at Atlanta, the Mises Institute, uh, they had like a, a shuttle, and they drove us across uh, Georgia to uh, Auburn in Alabama. We stayed in a hotel near there, and it, it was really nice. We had three or four days of uh, uh, lectures, uh, different people speaking, and even Ron Paul was there, which is really nice. Uh, you know, n nice person to meet. He he at the time was uh, in Congress, and uh, so I met Ron Paul. I asked him about Alan Greenspan. He told me the story that he went to Alan Greenspan once uh, with the essay Alan Greenspan wrote about golden economic freedom, and he asked them to. Uh, autograph it. He did. And he asked him as well, do you still believe in everything you said back then? He said, yes, I do. Uh, and, uh, and then he said, so how come, you know, you don't uh, espouse it? And he said, well, po politically, uh, it's not really uh, what people want. People want inflation. They don't want sound money, freedom, uh, self-reliance. So that that's what I got from uh, Ron Paul. So what's the mission statement of the Mises Institute? Uh, that will help you uh, kind of uh, get the gist of the Austrian school. So it says, the Mises Institute exists to promote teaching and research in the Austrian School of Economics and individual fr uh, freedom, honest history, and international peace in the tradition of Ludwig von Mises and Murray Rothbard. These great thinkers develop praxeology, a deductive science of human action based on premises known with certainty to be true. And this is what we teach and advocate. Our scholarly work is founded in Miesian praxeology, 
and in self-conscious opposition to the mathematical modeling and hypothesis testing that has created so much confusion in neoclassical economics. Uh, and it goes on to say, we are especially guided by their most important books, Mises' book, Human Action, Theory of Money and Credit, Socialism, Liberalism, and Theory and History, Rothbard, Man, Economy, and State with Power and Market, American, America's Great Depression, an Austrian perspective of the history of economic thought, the ethics of liberty, and I would also say uh, what has government done with our money. I like that Rothbard book. I have uh, uh, m most of these books, but not all of them. Uh, interesting that uh, socialism was written like in the early 20s, and Mises uh, already then uh, <laughs> said that socialism would, wouldn't work or communism because uh, it uh, centralizes human action in, in the central authority. It doesn't allow prices in the market to dictate where uh, resources should be allocated. And he was right, wasn't it? And even to this day, people still think that socialism uh, <laughs> should work. So yeah, that's the difference. Uh, one is interventionist, uh, authoritarian, um, central banking uh, based. The other one is free market, small government, sound money, competition based. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, the Austrian School of Economics in my book gets the nod, <laughs> not the neoclassical Keynesian PhD economics. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, share it, Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can also follow me on DTube, Steemit, and on Twitter. And I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.